welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Morphly and this is a space that's all things work, life, parenthood, harmony. I like to add harmony onto the end of it because I just feel like with work, life and parenthood, we need to make sure that everything is harmonious, that we are enjoying everything that we're balancing rather than balancing it, if that makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to share with you my experience at the Black Tech Achievement Awards. Thursday, the 17th of March, Queen Elizabeth Centre, London, it was a shutdown. I had an amazing time networking, liaising, chilling, hanging out with black folks in tech, black allies in tech, companies that are pushing their talent to go further and further and achieve amazing things. So what I'm here to tell you is the three things that I learned just by being in the presence of awesome black talent. So I made sure I grabbed one of these before I left the award and I just wanted to show you the inside. So we've got the headline sponsor being JP Morgan. We've got an amazing like program, right? We've got entertainment twice, we've got awards, we've got food, like it was an amazing night. Um, we've got the sponsors here, JP Morgan, PwC, Moody's, Aviva, uh, Publicis, Sapient. We've also got Oh, if you didn't know as well, right, is actually um, hosted or created by the same people who do the UK Black business shows. So shout out to Raphael Sofaluk on that. He's just killing the game. Um, but even there, you can see actually the one in Birmingham is going to be lit. They've got Akala, they've got Iman, they've got Jamila, they've got True Power, Powell. <laughs> like they've got some ama an amazing lineup for Birmingham. But anyway, back into the awards. Um, the first thing I actually learned about this awards, right, is representation is so, 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 so important, right? And it's not because we, well, it is because we need role models in these spaces. But in that, on that night, I brought myself back to being the 21-year-old woman, um, single mother, who was serving food. I, I don't know if many people know about this, but actually... When I graduated, I didn't get a grad job immediately. I took to the streets. <laughs> I um, basically started catering and um, I worked for Bright Sparks. I don't know if that still exists. I worked for Higher Society, which are basically just these agent, uh, agencies that send you places to serve. So through that experience, I served the Sultan of Brunei and his family. I served... Um, Alan Carr, I served Amanda Holden, and then I served loads of different corporates in their rugby boxes or their music boxes at music stadiums and things like that. And I never, in the eight months that I, I mean, it was eight months, but it was eight terrible, terrible months. I've never, in the eight months that I did catering, serve and cater a whole black event. If I had the opportunity to work a whole black event, when I was catering, I would have been there. The thing it would have done for me mentally, seeing what entrepreneurs, entrepreneur of the year, you can't really see it, there we go, entrepreneur of the year, we've got FinTech of the year, innovation champion, lifetime award, rising star, social good award, literally all of these awards that were going were all won and the nominees were all black talent. And what that would have done for me, and I know it probably did it for all the catering staff that was there that day, was see that actually they can achieve anything. Even if they're starting in catering, they can move into spaces like um, PwC, JP Morgan, all of these places, because there are people there already and it has been done. My favorite example of representation has to be Ola at Clear School, and he won Developer of the Year. Basically, Ola was made redundant. I think he was working in marketing, and he was made redundant, and he literally just did a whole career change and then became a developer. And to hear that story, to say two years ago he was in marketing, and now he's winning Developer of the Year, it's so powerful. And again, as the the catering staff, me, the 21-year-old lady, 
hearing that would have definitely put that fire in my heart to step out and do the things that I want to do. The second thing that I learned is networking is key. It's such an amazing thing. Like, and all it is, is just having a conversation with someone and keeping in contact. And I know in 2022, it's difficult. Everyone's got so much things going on. Networking doesn't mean you have to be someone's best friend and you don't have to be talking to them every single day. What it does mean is connecting with them on LinkedIn or social media and touching base every now and then. And it's so key to connect with those people in your space. And it's not that I should connect with another IT auditor. It's more like you're a black person in tech. Shout me. It's healthy to grow a network for us to just bounce ideas off each other and grow together and rise together. The third thing I learned was recognize your efforts. And it's just like, what's that got to do with the award show? But in sitting there, I saw so many amazing talent and so many amazing women and so many amazing men. Oh my gosh, there's a fourth thing that I learned. I'm going to add it as a bonus because I just remembered it. Um, but there's so many amazing women, there's so many amazing men. And I think it's so important where you can just reflect, especially those people who didn't win. If you reflect on where you've come from and every single step and every single win that has brought you to the place where you're able to be recognised as a nominee, you should really just pat yourself on the back because whatever we do, like I said earlier, sometimes the road is lonely. And if you're able to recognise what you do and what you've done, that keeps you going and keeps you motivated. The fourth thing that I learned, and I've got to put my hands on my waist for this one, right? Your cultural wear is black tie too. So I saw uncle, I have to call him uncle out of respect because that's just what we do. Uncle from SIA control room. Winner again, shout out to him again, link in the bio for the app. He wore his native dress not dress as a dress, but native outfit, right? And I was just like, do you know what? That's amazing to see. Even if he opened his mouth and he had a British accent, he acknowledged that we are black. Let us represent, represent ourselves truthfully. So fourth thing I learned is be comfortable to step out in your cultural wear, regardless of wherever you are. This is who you are. This is your culture. And this is formal and black tie. So this is how you step out. So TT, that's what I call myself sometimes. If you're wearing a gele to the Christmas party, wear your gele and be comfortable and confident. Representation is everything. Networking is king, queen, and everything in between. The third thing I've learned is recognize your efforts. And the fourth thing I've learned is we must wear our cultural wear where we go. <laughs> we have to consider our cultural wear as formal black tie wear as well as shirt and dresses please like comment subscribe and in the meantime have a great week until i see you next time bye